This tutorial is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello video creators, welcome to Storytium. In today's Premiere Pro tutorial we're going to create this awesome paper stacking transition effect. First I will show you how to make the transitions, then I'll show you how you can save them as a preset to be used in another project. Ok, let's stop wasting time, move over to Premiere and start some editing. Inside Premiere I've already got these two clips ready on the timeline. We're going to use these clips to make the transition. In the first step we're going to put the second clip on top of the first one. For this transition we're going to use a duration of around 2 seconds, which you can see here. Next I'm going to enable the Razor tool by hitting the C key or click this icon here and then I'm going to cut the video track in two parts. After that switch back to the Selection tool by hitting the V key or click this icon here and then move the cutoff part back to the first track. Ok, so now we've got a cutoff part of clip 2 on top of clip 1. In the next step we're going to move over to the effects panel, in there we're going to search for the transform effect, you'll find this one under video effects distort. I'll select the effect, then drag it over to the timeline to apply it to the cutoff part. Then make sure you've got the cutoff part selected and then move over to the effect control panel. And in there I'm going to enable keyframes for the position by clicking on this stopwatch icon here. Then move that keyframe that you just created to around 2 thirds of the transition time and create a second keyframe by moving the clip out of the frame. And by the way you can do this into any direction that you prefer, from the left to the right, from the top to the bottom. For this demo we're going to make it move from the left to the right. And so far we've now created this basic animation. Next I'm going to take the first keyframe and then put this at the beginning of the transition. Then I'm going to right click on the second keyframe and then select Ease In. And this will make the animation go a bit more smoother. Next I'm going to open up the keyframe graph and there I'm going to change the curve by adjusting the blue handle here. And after that the curve should look something like this. Let's do a quick playback and see what we've got so far. Next I will also disable the option for use composition shutter angle in the transform effect and I will also set shutter angle to 75. Changing this will add a bit of motion blur to the animation as you can see here by the edge of the frame. Ok, so now that we've finished this animation we need to nest this part of the clip. On the timeline we're going to right click on the cutoff part and then select nest. And then give the nested sequence a name and click ok. Ok, nested sequence created, now it's time to add another effect. So I'm going to head over to the effects panel and I'm going to search for the echo effect. You'll find this one under video effects and then time. Drag this one over to the timeline and apply it to the nested sequence. And then after applying this to the footage it might start to look a little weird, but we're going to fix this inside the effect control panel. We'll start by setting the echo operator to composite in back. Next we'll set the number of echoes or the number of pages to 6 and we'll change the echo time to minus 0.1. Then I'm going to enable keyframes for echo time by clicking on the stopwatch icon and then move the first keyframe to the beginning of the transition. And then create another keyframe with value 0 and then move that one to the end of the transition. And I'm using this keyframe with value 0 at the end because we want to stop the echo effect at the end of the transition. If I scrub to the timeline you can see what I mean and also what we've achieved so far. In the next step we're going to add one more effect, the radial shadow effect. You'll find this one under video effects perspective. I will also apply this one to the nested sequence. We applied this effect to create some shadows at the edges of the stacked papers, but now nothing is visible because we first need to change the order of the effects. We're going to do this in the effect control panel, simply select the radial shadow effect and then drag it on top of the echo effect. And because this effect is heavy it might take a few seconds before it gets visible. Ok there it is, now it's time to change some values of the effect. First I'll change distance to 1 and I'll set softness to 50 and then it should look something like this. Please note that if you chose an animation from right to left or top to bottom you also need to change the direction of the light source. As I mentioned this effect can be pretty heavy for your system and as you can see here by this red line it might need some rendering first. So if your playback on the timeline looks like this then you might want to render the effect for some smooth playback. And if you want to do this you need to go to the sequence menu and then select render effects into out. Or you could also simply hit the enter key if you have the timeline selected. Anyway after that Premiere will start rendering the effects and you can see the progress here. And then after rendering the playback on the timeline should look as smooth as this. And this is the transition that we created in the last couple of minutes. 
If you want to know how you can save this transition as a preset to be used in future projects, then stay tuned, because I'm going to tell you all about it after the message of our sponsor Squarespace. If you want to build your own website or web store, then definitely check out Squarespace. I've used them for more than two years now and I can confirm that it's easy to start with their award-winning templates, even if you don't have any experience with web design. And their templates are built in such a way that it will look great on any device, like your PC, tablet or smartphone. Use the link squarespace.com slash to get a free trial or 10% discount on your first purchase. The links can be found in the video description. Ok, now it's time to show you how to save the transition as a preset. First I'm going to open up the nested sequence by double clicking on it. Then make sure you've got the clip selected on the timeline and head over to the effect control panel. In there I'm going to select the transform effect, right click on it and then select save preset. In the window that pops up you need to make sure you've got a scale selected and you can also give this a name. I'll name this one preset1 one, and then click ok. Next we can go back to the other sequence and then select the transition on the timeline. Here we've got the other two effects, the radial shadow and the echo effect. I'll select them both by holding the control key and then right click on it and select save preset. And again make sure you've got scale selected and I'll name this one preset 2 and click ok. And now that we've got the two presets ready I'll show you how to use them. I made a copy of the two clips and as you can see I've already stacked and cut the clips just like I did in the beginning of this tutorial. Now we can move over to the effects panel, open up the preset section and then apply preset 1 to the transition. Then we need to nest this part by right clicking on it and then select nest. If you want you can give the nested sequence a name and then click ok. And then we can apply preset 2 to the nested sequence. And that's it, after rendering the effects the transition will look like this. And that also concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did you might also want to check out one of these two videos. Anyway, as always, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.